For decades, Voyager 2 has been traversing space and sending back transformative data. Now, a Nobel Prize-winning physicist is sounding the alarm. Voyager 2 reportedly detected a phenomenon so baffling that it could overturn established physics. And some speculate NASA may be withholding the full story. What did the probe actually encounter, and why could revealing it be dangerous? The bold mission that launched ambitions. In the 1970s, NASA embarked on a daring plan enabled by a rare planetary alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, an alignment that occurs once in roughly 176 years. By harnessing gravity assists, one spacecraft could visit all four giant planets. This became Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, marvels of engineering designed for only a four-year expedition. Back then, Voyager 2's onboard computer had a mere 69 kilobytes of memory. Data storage was via eight-track tapes, and communication relied on a 23-watt transmitter, tiny by today's standards. Yet these minimalist systems proved remarkably resilient, withstanding harsh radiation zones and freezing voids. Voyager 2's trajectory was precisely tuned for successive planetary flybys. Despite initial skepticism, could it survive Jupiter's radiation or the asteroid belt, the spacecraft cruised through unscathed, delivering groundbreaking observations of solar wind and small celestial bodies. What started as a short mission turned into an epic, decades-long odyssey. Jupiter, July 1979. Voyager 2 followed Voyager 1 to Jupiter, capturing breathtaking images of swirling cloud bands and the iconic Great Red Spot. Volcanic eruptions on Io were spotted for the first time beyond Earth, while Europa's icy surface hinted at a hidden ocean. The mission also discovered Jupiter's faint ring system and mapped its intense magnetic fields and auroras. Saturn, August 1981. As Voyager 2 swept past Saturn, it revealed intricate ring structures and gaps sculpted by small moons. Titan's hazy atmosphere was studied in more detail, and icy moons like Enceladus showed signs of geological activity. Atmospheric measurements unveiled dynamic weather patterns, wind speeds, and a deeper understanding of Saturn's magnetosphere. Uranus, January 1986. Voyager 2 made history at Uranus, finding a planet tipped nearly on its side with an oddly angled magnetic field that spiraled like a corkscrew. The moons were far more interesting than expected. Miranda displayed massive cliff faces and strange terrains, and others hinted at internal activity. Narrow rings and their small shepherd moons were also captured in detail. Voyager 2 crosses into interstellar space, and something is terrifying. Far beyond Neptune, Voyager 2 passed the heliopause, the edge of the sun's magnetic influence, joining Voyager 1 as the only crafts to reach interstellar space. But unlike earlier theories expecting a gradual transition, the probe recorded sudden, sharp changes in plasma density, temperature, electromagnetic fields, and a dramatic spike in galactic cosmic rays. It felt like stepping through a door into a vastly different realm, challenging previous assumptions and revealing a more intricate boundary than ever imagined. Now, a Nobel-winning physicist claims Voyager 2 observed something truly inexplicable, something so profound that it challenges core laws of physics. The exact nature of the discovery remains under wraps, but speculation ranges from anomalous particle behavior to strange magnetic disturbances. Why NASA might keep this under lock and key? Theories abound. Is this secret observation potentially destabilizing to spacecraft electronics or even human health during future interstellar missions? Could it expose gaps in our fundamental understanding of the cosmos? The urgency suggested by the Nobel scientist raises the stakes. What did Voyager 2 really discover beyond the heliosphere? Could future interstellar probes replicate or confirm these findings? And are we about to rewrite the rule book of physics based on something none of us were expecting? After Uranus, 
Voyager 2's final push toward Neptune. Following its groundbreaking flyby of Uranus, which exceeded mission expectations, NASA engineers fine-tuned Voyager 2's trajectory toward its last planetary objective, Neptune. Despite operating in a realm where sunlight dwindled and radio signals weakened, the spacecraft's instruments continued to function reliably. The Uranus encounter had revealed a surprising level of complexity in what many assumed were quiet, frozen planets. It became clear that every planet, no matter how remote or icy, might hold dynamic secrets. Boosted by Uranus's gravity, Voyager 2 plunged even farther into uncharted space, on track to revolutionize planetary science once again. In August 1989, Voyager 2 became the first and still the only spacecraft to visit Neptune up close. This deep blue world turned out to be far from lifeless. Despite its modest size compared to Jupiter and Saturn, Neptune was brimming with activity. Voyager 2's cameras caught glimpses of extreme winds reaching supersonic speeds and storm systems like the now famous Great Dark Spot, a transient atmospheric vortex that echoed Jupiter's Great Red Spot but eventually vanished. The planet's upper atmosphere shimmered with high-altitude clouds made of methane ice swirling through the frigid skies. These dynamic patterns puzzled scientists. How could such intense weather systems thrive so far from the sun's energy? Neptune's meteorology hinted at an internal heat engine emitting more energy than it received from the sun and driving these extraordinary winds. One of the biggest surprises lay on Neptune's moon, Triton. Voyager 2 captured imagery of a surface sculpted by unique geological processes, smooth plains, ridged cantaloupe terrain, and active geysers ejecting nitrogen gas high into the atmosphere. Unlike other major moons, Triton orbits in the opposite direction of Neptune's rotation, leading scientists to theorize it was a captured object from the Kuiper Belt. The discovery of active cryovolcanism suggested internal heating mechanisms were at play, even in this frigid environment, shattering assumptions that icy worlds so far from the Sun would be geologically dormant. Voyager 2 also discovered several previously unknown moons and revealed that Neptune's ring system was not continuous. Instead, it featured arcs, clumped regions of ring particles that defied easy explanation. Researchers theorized that gravitational tugs from nearby shepherd moons may have shaped these odd formations. Further advancing our understanding of how rings evolve and behave around distant planets. With Neptune behind it, Voyager 2 completed its planetary tour. Its data enriched our understanding of all four gas giants and paved the way for future missions. But the journey was far from over. The tech that defied time. Voyager 2 was built using technology from the early 1970s, with memory and hardware laughably limited by modern standards. Its computers held only 69 kilobytes of memory in total and it recorded data on an eight-track tape system. Yet what it lacked in digital power, it made up for in engineering durability. The spacecraft used a 23-watt transmitter to beam its data across billions of miles, relying on a 12-foot high-gain antenna to maintain contact with Earth. Even with such low power, NASA's Deep Space Network, DSN, could detect and decode its transmissions using giant ground-based dishes over time, as Voyager 2 moved farther away, data transmission slowed. But the Deep Space Network upgraded to match the challenge, ensuring communications remained open. Power came from radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, which converted the heat of radioactive plutonium decay into electricity. Each year, the energy output gradually dropped, forcing mission controllers to prioritize essential instruments and deactivate others. Remarkably, some systems continued functioning even in temperatures lower than expected, a testament to the spacecraft's robust design. Backup components ensured that critical operations could continue even in the event of failures. If one recorder failed, another was ready. If a thruster degraded, redundant units took over. This redundancy paired with simpler analog circuits 
made Voyager too incredibly resilient, ideal for a mission with no possibility of repair. Approaching the Galactic Edge After leaving Neptune, Voyager 2 entered a region never before explored, the distant outskirts of the solar system beyond the Kuiper Belt. Here, the spacecraft began its mission to probe the heliosphere's limits, the vast bubble inflated by solar wind that protects us from the galactic environment. Scientists had long debated the exact location of the heliopause, the outer boundary where the sun's influence ends. Voyager 2's suite of instruments recorded changing levels of cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and plasma, clues that helped pinpoint when the probe left the heliosphere and entered interstellar space. In November 2018, Voyager 2 officially crossed that boundary, six years after Voyager 1. Interestingly, the transition into interstellar space was more subtle than anticipated. Instead of a sharp change in magnetic field direction, data suggested a more gradual wrapping of the interstellar field around the solar bubble. This hinted at a far more complex structure at the boundary than models had predicted. Even now, Voyager 2's data remains invaluable. It helps researchers map the properties of the interstellar medium, measuring plasma waves, cosmic rays, and the density of particles far beyond the Sun's domain. These measurements continue to reshape our understanding of how stars interact with the galaxy, stretching the mission's limits. Power management remains a critical challenge. The RTGs steadily produce less electricity, so NASA has had to make difficult decisions, powering down some systems to keep the most valuable instruments running. Yet surprises continue. For example, one instrument, assumed to require heat to function, kept working even after its heater was shut off. These kinds of unexpected successes have prolonged the mission's scientific return. Each year, the spacecraft's engineers assess which tools to keep running and which must be sacrificed. Communication links are fragile and increasingly faint, but with careful adjustments and technological upgrades on Earth, they persist. Eventually, Voyager 2 will run out of power. It will stop sending data. But long after its final signal fades, it will continue to drift through the stars, carrying a message from Earth. Alongside its scientific instruments, Voyager 2 carries the iconic golden record, a phonograph inscribed with music, images, and greetings from humanity. Curated by a team led by Carl Sagan, the record was designed as a cultural artifact, a time capsule to showcase Earth's diversity and curiosity to any extraterrestrials who might find it. Though symbolic, the golden record reminds us of the mission's deeper purpose, not only to gather scientific data, but also to represent our species in the cosmos. It's a beacon of hope and wonder, drifting through the Milky Way as a silent ambassador of Earth. Why Pluto Still Matters At first glance, Pluto may seem like a cold, distant, and irrelevant dwarf planet. But appearances can be deceiving. This icy world challenges what we thought we knew about planetary science and forces us to rethink where life might exist. For decades, scientists focused on the habitable zone, the region around a star where liquid water could exist on a planet's surface. Earth sits comfortably in that zone. Pluto, on the other hand, is far beyond it. Yet evidence suggests that beneath its icy crust, Pluto may have a liquid ocean, kept warm by internal heat and insulated by clathrate hydrates. That alone is a game changer. It means that life-supporting environments might exist far beyond what we once considered possible, not just on Earth-like planets, but on small, frozen worlds. If Pluto can retain liquid water, maybe so can distant exoplanets or icy moons, even those orbiting far from their stars. Pluto isn't alone. Other icy bodies like Europa and Enceladus have subsurface oceans too. But Pluto proves that internal oceans aren't limited to large moons under tidal stress. Even small Kuiper Belt objects might be active, insulated, and habitable. Pluto also teaches us about planetary evolution, its atmosphere, geology, and the cycling of elements like nitrogen and methane offer clues to how small planets can retain heat 
and potentially host chemistry essential to life. Earth's own extremophiles, organisms that live in boiling vents or sub-zero lakes, remind us that life is incredibly adaptable. So if similar chemical and thermal conditions exist beneath Pluto's surface, life might not be out of the question. The discovery of geological activity, a complex atmosphere, and signs of internal heat on Pluto came as a surprise. Before the New Horizons mission, we thought it was just a frozen relic. Now we know better. And that realization changes how we search for life, not just in our solar system, but across the galaxy. Rather than focusing only on Earth-like planets, scientists are now investigating a wider range of worlds, cold ones, small ones, even rogue planets floating between stars. If insulation and internal heat can keep oceans liquid, life might thrive in places we never thought to look. This redefinition of habitability is already influencing future missions. We're designing better instruments to detect subsurface water, analyze atmospheres, and trace the chemical fingerprints of life. Pluto showed us that even the coldest, most remote objects might hold answers to some of our biggest questions. So why does Pluto matter? Because it pushes the boundaries of what we consider a habitable world. It encourages us to stay curious, to challenge our assumptions, and to keep searching in the places we least expect. If a tiny, icy world billions of miles from the sun can reveal this much, just imagine what else is out there, waiting to surprise us. Voyager's legacy lives on. From the volcanic moons of Jupiter to the methane geysers of Triton, Voyager 2 has delivered discoveries that continue to inspire scientists and dreamers alike. Its findings still fuel research, influencing how we design missions to the outer planets and how we think about planetary atmospheres, ring dynamics, and space weather. More than four decades after launch, Voyager 2 is still transmitting. Every bit of data enriches our understanding of the universe and reminds us of what's possible when we dare to explore the unknown.